process of making this, I'm going to show you, number one, how to make a weather vane, and number two, how to use this technique that I use to make the chicken into any animal that you want. Here are all the parts you need to make a chicken weather vane. Although, it could be an alligator weather vane or a muskrat weather vane. It really doesn't matter. The technique I'm going to show you applies to any critter you want to make. So I'll give you a parts list following this thing here, but this is a three-quarter inch plywood. I used acrylic paint to paint it. Uh, this is cold rolled steel, uh, quarter inch. This is also quarter inch cold rolled steel. These four pointers, north, south, east, and west, are as cold rolled quarter inch steel as well. This is half inch pipe with a 3 8 inside diameter into which this will fit nicely and spins freely. And uh, this piece here is the stand that it goes on that's going to be the mounting uh, that's going to mount to the bottom here, which I'm not going to show you because uh, every mounting situation is going to be different. This is a locking shaft collar to which is going to be welded all of these pointers. And then once you establish, after it's mounted and everything else, you establish where North actually is, you'll grind a small flat spot in there and tighten down that Allen screw there and that'll hold that into that position all the time after that. This is a 3 8 inch inside diameter fender washer. It's important that it's nice and wide because it's going to act like an umbrella to protect the 10 millimeter inside diameter thrust bearing. And all right, sits on top of this uh, 3 8 inch standard washer. Uh, this is 3 8 cold rolled steel. Uh, this is RG45. These come in 36 inch lengths. They're going to be cut in half. So I'm going to have four of these pieces, 18 inches long, and they're going to form the scroll on the pointers for the direction. Uh, this is uh, 18 gauge steel. This is going to be six and a half inches point to point here, seven and a half inches from this point to these outer points. So there you go. That's everything you need to know. And here's your shopping list. To start, you want to find an image on the internet that's going to be what you want and the theme for what you're looking for to put on top of your weather vane. Now, I chose these because the feet are in line with the head, and that's kind of a, what you're looking for anyway on any animal. It's a profile view of them walking in a single direction. So then you blow up this to full page, and then you can draw an outline all around the image, and then use that as a pattern to uh, do a blow up. Now you can blow up the uh, image directly after you draw a line around it or you can transfer it like transparency film like I did here. So now when I want to get to the other side of the chicken when I'm painting the other side I can just copy those features and paste them right to the to the cutout and then I know where to carve out the features. So then once you blow this image up 200% on your photocopier, you're only going to get bits and pieces at a time. Might even be just a, a section of a line. But when all the lines come together, you'll end up with a nice pattern like so. And that's the size I chose for the chicken that I want to make. And that's in direct proportion to the original photograph. And there's the end result after it's cut out and painted. You want to find a sheet of three-quarter inch plywood that's going to fit the size of the image that you want to create. Next off is gesso. This is a material that they use. Artists use it on canvases and it fills all the little voids and stuff. It makes the surface nice and smooth. And so what I'm going to do is put the gesso on an area around here that is just enough to cover what I think is going to be about the size of the image that I'm going to create. So. All I got to do is just spread this out, and when I'm finished, uh, I'll have a nice white surface that I can lay my template on top of, and then I can take and uh, create an outline by transfer the image through carbon paper. Once I fix the um, image, the blow up on top of this. Once the gesso is dried, then you lay a sheet of transfer paper. This is what artists use to transfer the outline of an image to another white surface or other colored surface, it really doesn't matter. 
then um, it transfers a graphite line so it is erasable if you want to uh, then you lay your image on top of that and then you draw around the image using a dull pencil so you can put more pressure on it and then you can see from putting that pressure on you can start seeing these lines as you can see here This is what I use to drill my holes in the feet. And you want to have two locations where you're going to have posts, steel posts that go up there. So you want to make sure that you're going to drill in down to the depth that you prescribe, as you've seen here with my tape marker. So you want to lay this on here first to get the angle of the plane, and then you just do the same when you go down here. You kind of already got a, kind of a fix on it. So you put that in to the depth of where you want to go. And similar to what I've done here, so you can see. Once a clear cut line was established, then I used my jigsaw to, with a fine blade to cut it out. And it's uh, just a slow process. Now the jigsaw square cuts this edge, so you have to round it when you're all done. So I used these uh, backer pad and that four and a half inch grinder and a 4E grit sandpaper and it takes the edge down pretty good. You want to kind of slightly round it on the front and pointy on the back so that the air flows nicely over it. This is the only tool I use to do all of the carving. Almost ready for another layer of gesso, uh, final layer. And then uh, let's take care of all these little imperfections. You couldn't see until you painted it. And then once you painted it over with the gesso, then all these little imperfections started standing out. So To do the feet of the chicken, I used uh, this orange colors here. They don't have to be exact. These are the red colors that I used to paint the head. This is the brush I used mostly to do the head and the feet. And the rest of this, this kind of brush and this brush here was to soften shading. And this one was to spread the white titanium white around. And of course, there was a little bit black there I used to make the eyeball. First I cut a slit down one end of the arrow shaft where it meets the head. Now the head will go in there all the way and then I will weld that, tack weld it at three points. Here, on this side, and that side, and the same on the other side. Now to make the feathers, I marked one uh, RG45 rod with all the three and a half inch dimensions and then use those to find the location where the tape would go and then put those all lined up and those are now my cut lines and that will leave me with 10 nice little neat bundles all the same length. To make the tail feather you just line up everything so that they're directly across from each other and then they're equal in in length here, and then you're just going to take and roll this to the side and that's basically How you're going to form the feathers of the arrow so then I'll do That to the other side as well, and that will be the tail feather It's a bit heavy on that end, so I'm going to grind it down a bit. So it's going to end up being a, a shiny tail feather that I might colorize. Here we go. That's cleaned up a bit better. You can use a template like this if you feel the need for accuracy, but I found that it's pretty easy to do. Just by eyeballing, it's nice and square. You can eyeball it pretty good. But 
What's important is where that Allen screw is located and that it doesn't end up being part of any weld. Tiny tack welds to start all around. This is welded up. And the Allen screw is free and clear of any weld. Now that the pivot post is welded to the arrow and the bearing is fully seated, you want to mark, push the bearing down so it, it's absolutely seated. Now you know that it's going to be floating inside the tube at that level. So now we want to take the corresponding rod and go up to that point allowing about an eighth of an inch of clearance and then mark that to where we're going to weld it so that these two are not touching each other inside the tube. I want to make sure this weld was going completely all the way around and sealed up that tube completely because now when I put oil in here and connect these together this is going to create a well of oil that this pivot post is going to be immersed in and once the bearing is oiled then this washer is going to protect from rain to getting in the bearing and inside this shaft so it's going to be perpetually floating in a pool of oil now that the pivot post is welded perpendicularly to the arrow and the mounting posts are welded in place going up inside the chicken we know they're a little bit too long so now knowing that I can put those back in because they're going to be perfectly aligned for me I can knock this out cut the top inch off of these mounting posts reinsert it with the epoxy in place and it's going to rest down on top of the arrow right in this groove like the chicken standing on the arrow itself. Looks good. Here I bent up one representative example of the scroll work that goes under the north, south, east, and west pointers. Now you notice how it's laying in those bricks. I bent this by hand, so now I know how to bend the other three to match. To do the letters north, south, east, and west, I went online and found an interesting font, and I blew it up 450 times, and then I'm using this... Um, half inch by eighth inch rod and I use bits and pieces of that to do the fat portions of the letters and the rest is going to be using eighth inch um, RG45 like you can see here see it's right on there you just follow the lines and I uh, use bent these with an oxyacetylene torch and tack weld it in one spot and then you can literally just follow along you get one in place first one sweep and then the other one you can just kind of tack weld as you go and um, heat it up with the torch as you go. Here's what it looks like on the back side. Here's the W before welding. So you can see how that works. Next, I'll go in and fill all of these grooves with a weld. Just one continuous weld, and it'll end up looking like uh, down here with the S. So you can see on the back side, all that sneaky sweep. And then I'll fill that all in, and that's what it's going to look like. And ultimately, uh, when it's all done, there's uh, East after it's been buffed out. And um, that one's pretty much ready to go. Although I'm going to torch tin it to probably a, a blue color. And then lock that in with Renaissance wax. North, south, east and west. There we are. West. North. East. And south. I was looking all over for a globe for my weather vane. I didn't want to spend a fortune on a globe, but I found this at St. Vincent de Paul. Look at that. Uh, $1.50. And it looks like it's going to be perfect. I already cut off a weld here and looked underneath, and the sphere continues. So I think this is going to be perfect, about six inches in diameter. Nice find.
here I use the Dremel cutoff wheel to get rid of these pieces here. I just wanted the globe is what I really wanted, but then I thought, oh, this piece looks kind of cool. I think I'm going to take this steel ball off of here, and I'm going to use this mounted to this on the bottom, just for a little decoration. <laughs> 